Hello students, I am Dr. Saurabh Bhattacharya, an assistant professor in Department of Geology, University of Delhi. I hope you are going through other modules on geology. Today we are going to discuss on drilling methods. After studying this module, you shall be able to understand the basic requirements and processes involved in drilling program of geochemical exploration. Also, you shall be able to develop a basic idea on various geological and economic factors critical to choose a drilling method. Introduction The process of making holes in the ground or rock is called drilling. Drilling is employed in mining and geological work for prospecting, exploration, blasting and related development processes. Drills are operated either manually or mechanically by means of compressed air, water under pressure, petrol engine, diesel engine, electricity, high temperature flames and rarely using steam. Based on principal methods involved, a number of techniques have been developed which are described below. First is auger drilling. Augers are truck mounted or handheld drills that have rods with spiral flights to carry soft material to the surface. Their main use is to sample placer deposits. Use of power augers is necessary for deep sampling in materials easily penetrable, particularly if pitting is not practicable. They are able to dig up to 30 meters of depths. However, truck mounted rigs are capable to reach up to 60 meters of depth. The diameters of holes varies from 5 to 15 centimeters. In soft ground, use of auger gives rapid results and sampling methods need to cope up with continuous flow of material to surface. One needs to be careful about cross-contamination between samples. Since augers are light drills, they are incapable to penetrate either hard ground or boulders. Hence, Heavier equipments are necessary for such rock material if one aims to drill up to greater depths. One of the disadvantages of auger drilling is poor quality of sampling with considerable mixing of materials from different levels of hole. Basically, drilling involves making small diameter holes usually only a few meters in mineral exploration in a geological target to recover a representative sample from depth. Among the physical, feasible methods, rotary, percussion, reverse circulation and diamond core drilling are considered as the most useful ones. The next method of drilling is rotary drilling. This method of drilling is a non-coring method and is the one of the best choices for drilling through soft to medium hard rocks such as limestone, chalk or mudstone. A rotary bit comprises of tricone or roller rock bit which is tipped with tungsten carbide insets. Rock chips are flushed to the surface by drilling fluid for examination. <clears throat> Even up to 100 meter per hour of depths can be reached. In oil industry, this type of drilling is often used with large holes, usually greater than 20 centimeter, to reach depths of thousands of meters. Drilling muds are used in abundance to lift rock chips to surface. The whole setup is bulky which presents mobility problems. The next method of drilling is percussion drilling. In this technique, a hammer unit is driven by compressed air which imparts a series of rapid blows to the drill bits or drill rods. 
and at the same time performs a rotary motion. Drills can be held handheld units or else large truck mounted drills capable to drill large diameter holes of several hundred meters depth. The drill units can be categorized into two types down the hole hammer drill and top hammer drill. Down the hole hammer drill in this method the hammer is let down through the hole and is attached to the lower end of drill rods to operate a non coring tungsten carbide tipped drill bit. By using such units it is possible to drill holes of up to 20 centimeter of diameter to reach depths of up to 200 meter. A regular and efficient source of compressed air is useful as it flushes the drill cuttings to the surface. The drill cuttings are related to the depth of the hole. However, such direct correlation is always reliable because holes may not be cased, thus allowing fall of material from higher levels. Rigs are usually track or truck mounted and thus mobile. The next is top hammer drills. In this, the hammer unit lies at the top of the drill stem and thus the energy to non-coring drill bit is imparted through drill rods. As compared to down the hole hammer drills, these are lighter units. For preparing holes of up to 10 cm of diameter, top drill hammers are useful, although are not feasible for depths greater than 100 meters. Use of light air compressors is common and hence depth of drilling is restricted, at times just a few meters below the water table. The mounting of drill units is mostly on either light trucks or tractors. It should be noted that even if the percussion drilling methods are rapid and cheap, they are disadvantageous in terms of providing precise location of samples. However, cost of drilling is up to one half or one third of that for Draman drilling. Percussion drilling is particularly useful in evaluation of deposits that present sampling problems rather than geological ones, for example, a porphyry copper deposit. Due to rapid rate of penetration, 150 to 200 meters of drilling can be done in an 8 hour shift. Thus, several hundred samples can be collected each day with good penetration rates. Sample collection and examination need to be rapid and organized as each 1.5 meter of 10 centimeter diameter hole is likely to supply approximately 20 to 30 kg of rock chips. Similar to other compressed air machines, the hole operation is quite noisy. The next method of drilling is reverse circulation method. Since mid 70s reverse circulation technique is in used, reverse circulation technique is in use and used for unconsolidated sediments, for example alluvial deposits or for drilling rock. Air and water can be used to flush drill cuttings or cores. In this method, double walled string of drill rods are used along with compressed air driven percussion hammer or a rotating tungsten carbide coring bit at the cutting end of string. A fluid medium is supplied to cutting bit between twin walled drilling rods and it returns to surface through the center of rods. This method is advantageous over auger rotary or percussion drilling as the entire sample is collected. Also, the method is extremely quick with little possibilities of contamination. In comparison to other methods, reverse circulation is relatively expensive due to need of specialized rods, compressor and additional equipments. 
However, the high cost of operation is outweighed by higher quality of sample collection. The next method of drilling is diamond core drilling. In this method, cutting of sample by means of a diamond arbor, starting from the next method of drilling is diamond core drilling. This method involves cutting of sample by means of a diamond armored or impregnated bit. A cylinder of rock is recovered from the inner tube of a core barrel. Both bit and core barrel are connected to surface through a continuous length of steel or aluminum alloy rods. This allows the bit and core barrel to be lowered into hole and pull to surface as and when needed. A rotary cutting motion is also transmitted to the drilling bit from surface using surface diesel power unit with appropriate pressure to cutting edge. A diamond core drilling system comprises of several sophisticated units like first drill bits. Drill bits are either impregnated or surface set. The impregnated ones consist of industrial grade or fine grained synthetic diamonds in metallic cement. In drill bits of surface set types, individual diamonds are present sized by their number per carat. For tough compact rocks like chert, impregnated drill bits are suitable. However, for softer rocks such as limestones, surface set varieties are useful. Diamond bit bits, even if costly, can penetrate any type of rocks in time to provide maximum core recovery. The choice of bit requires considerable experience and judgment. The next is core barrels. The circular motion of drill bit cuts a cylinder of rock, which is the core, which is forced up into the core barrel by advancing drill rods. Based on the length of core, core barrels have been classified. Generally, they are 1.5 to 3 meters in length, although can be as long as 6 meter. To improve recovery of cores, an inner core barrel is independent of the motion of drill rods and thus does not rotate. The next is circulating medium. Water is circulated down through the drill rods. It washes the cutting surface of drill bit and returns to surface through narrow space between outside of the rods and wall of the drill hole. The purpose of this circulation is to lubricate the drill bit and to cool it in addition to removal of crushed and ground rock fragments from the bit surface. For friable and soft rocks, this circulation action may at times flush away part of the sample which needs to be mitigated by adding specialized additives to medium. Various clay or chemicals may be used along with water which can also seal the rock face of the drill hole. The science and use of drilling fluids is a broad subject applicable to oil industry. In mineral exploration, drilling machines used have capacity of up to 2000 meters and at times exceptionally up to 6000 meters. The rate of drilling depends on the type of drill rig, the bit, the rate, the hole diameter, depth of hole, lithology and the skill of driller. A number of aspects remain to be decided by driller. Some of them include best volume of drilling fluid to be flushed over drill bit, right pressure to apply at its cutting surface, right number of revolutions per minute and the correct choice of drill bit. The next method of drilling is sonic core drilling. Sonic drilling retrieves core without contamination by drilling muds. This method 
uses the principle of harmonics to drill and case a bore hole. Variable frequency drill head is used to transmit vibration energy by drill pipe and core barrel which allows continuous core sampling. Sonic drilling is able to penetrate through overburden, fine sand, boulders and hard rock. This technique is capable of collecting samples up to 254 millimeter in diameter and can drill up to 200 meters vertically or in inclined holes. The main advantage of sonic drilling is recovery of uncontaminated, undisturbed samples as no air, water or other drilling medium is used. Even in glacial till, this method can provide 100% core recovery. It has rapid penetration rate, reduced on-site costs along with minimal environmental effects. The next section of this module is geological logging of drill hole samples. Core recovery which means ratio of length or volume of sample recovered to that of drilled should be effective. In case of recovery lower than 85 to 90 percent is the value of core is doubtful. This is because mineralized and altered rock zones are frequently most friable and the first to be crushed readily and lost during drilling. Thus, the core is not the representative of the rock drilled, thus is not a true sample and probably misleads. In case of core drilling, core logging is done rapidly at the drill site. Based on such information, it is decided whether the drilling is to be continued or abandoned. Hand lens or binocular microscope is used to examine wetted core. After the completion of initial logging at drill site, the core is moved to a field base for more detailed examination of core at a later date. Records of structural features, lithological descriptions along with other details are made in a systematic and quantitative manner. Wooden, plastic or metal boxes are used for storing cores. Rock chips and dust collected during drilling process represent the rock cut away by drill bit. In non-core drilling, Chips and dust are generally collected at 1 to 2 meters of interval which is followed by their drying and packing them at the drill site. After washing, it is easy to examine them using hand lens or binocular microscope. At times, to recover heavy mineral concentrate, samples are panned. All the description must be systematic and as quantitative as possible. The next section is patterns of drilling. Drilling pattern depends upon the intended use of data. In reconnaissance survey, first holes may be isolated from each other and drilled just for geological orientation. In exploration of sedimentary deposits, say of coal, uranium, borates, holes can be drilled up to 10 km apart. This is just to identify the sedimentary formations of interest and to obtain structural data. Usually a systematic grid of drill hole pattern is followed to cover the mineralized zone. This gives a good statistical coverage and geological cross sections can be made with a minimum of projection. The inclination of individual holes is critical and holes should be drilled at right angles to the expected average dip of mineralization. Before the drilling commences, it is highly recommended to draw a section along the projected length of drill hole. The section is modified as the hole progresses. It should be noted that drilling is an expensive and time consuming aspect of mineral exploration. The main object of any drilling program is to drill precise number of holes within budget to locate and demonstrate the grade and tonnage of mineralization 
at an appropriate level of accuracy and precision. Now I summarize this module on drilling methods. Drilling is one of the important aspects of mineral exploration. It is a process of cutting through rocks or soils using a drill bit to enlarge a hole of circular cross section. The bit is rotated at rates from hundreds to thousands of revolutions per minute. The choice of drilling method depends on the task at hand. The most common techniques are rotary, percussion, reverse circulation and diamond core drilling. The main aim of any drilling exercise is good core recovery so as to recover the mineralized and altered rock zones. For non-core drilling, rock chips and dust collection is done. Careful logging is important in any type of drilling operation involving systematic and qualitative records of various geological parameters. The choice of number of drilling sites in any particular area depends upon the stage of exploration. In mineralized regions, it is necessary to follow a systematic grid of drill hole pattern. Drilling is an expensive part of exploration program, although it is necessary to constrain the location, grade and tonnage of any mineral deposit.